you know thank goodness for YouTube in a certain way because as long as I've done this a lot of the things I'm going to say I've said in other videos and repeated but they're all going to come together in a completely different context and the way they fit kind of amazes me and stuff and I'm gonna try to get to the point of this because I'm having major computer issues where uh, I don't even know if this thing is going to charge or hold a charge long enough to upload this I've had a couple of ideas for videos reacting to like comic book news and a few things that's going on in the last couple weeks and I'm actually glad I was having computer issues and didn't do them uh, it, it pays for better judgment cause all the things that I've seen kind of come to my head to paint a better picture years ago I did a video and I've talked about crisis before about how I was like about 11 and 12 when this came out and it was a jumping off point for a lot of uh, older collectors uh, that were like my stepdad's friends and just people I'd met you know at the comic book rack here and there and stuff and I absolutely loved it I thought this was a fantastic idea they're taking 50 years of history and we got George Perez drawing Jack Kirby characters and He's just having a blast on this. When an, you can tell when an artist is very happy with what they're with their work and what they're doing, and they're having fun, and it showed in this. And I was, you know, I was like sad about the death of Supergirl because the story just sucked you in. She went out like a hero, and then you they give you a one-two punch with the death of the Flash. And then we get to issue twelve, and all of a sudden, after I've been excited about this and thinking I'm, you know, I'm just loving this series and things are going to be different after this. Something happened in the back of the book. Um, Earth 2 Robin and Earth 2 Huntress and a Teen Titans character named Cole um, all died in a little corner of one of the pages and stuff. And a wall had collapsed and trapped uh, Huntress and she was knocked out. And Earth 2 Robin, who's probably in his 50s in this book, is flipping out and like, oh my god, we need help. And then all these shadow demons come in and, and kill them and they scream and stuff. And all of a sudden, I thought, this may not be a good idea as much, you know, like I thought it would be. Flash forward years now and we all know about the state of Marvel. And the difference being is that back then without all the tools that we have now through the internet of Twitter and comic book news and all sorts of things sites social media to get a bigger picture of what's going on is just completely different in how a Marvel comic can feel we are now living in an era where for years Marvel sort of set the standard and brought in the idea of continuity I've got the door open sorry guys and uh, you know they, they kind of they kind of set the standard and at the same time DC was still putting out some critically acclaimed books albeit not all of them were in their continuity you know we're talking things like Dark Knight and Watchmen and Longbow Hunters and Sandman and things across the years and stuff <clears throat> things that went into Vertigo uh, comics and stuff you know this comic book history whether you know it or not and now we're living in an era where we have creators from Marvel being absolutely terrible to be people on Twitter if you get on there and look at it we have them announcing legacy and generations and now we're finding out that it's they they're just sloppy something is going on they can't even be honest with what those events are or miniseries or whatever they want to call them um, and there's a lot of people talking about them and then all of a sudden I feel like there's a slingshot reaction now to where we have a bunch of uh, channels I think my last count was like about 12 and not all of them are exclusive to talking about linking the the the, the words SJW and Marvel together but they call out things and they're just saying that this is bad some are more critical than others and some aren't and we're reaching a point where we're going to start hearing things repeated because now that the shock and awe and confusion in the train wreck has hit that is Marvel now um, people are all coming to the same conclusions and assumptions with what we have um, and the thing about these channels are um, is I compare it to you know if you go back in history to where you had the, the, the you know since things are so political uh, there, there was a debate is one of the first if not the first I really don't know uh, deb presidential debates that was on television and it was Nixon versus Kennedy and that's fascinating for a lot of people who truly do study politics because what had happened was is that you've got good-looking John F. K. 
John F. Kennedy there, you know. And good looking guy on TV and kind of charismatic, charismatic. Then you had somebody like Nixon. Nixon was the more informed and in depth politician. Uh, what was in mind, he was not an idiot, you know. It's not slamming Kennedy, but Nixon w really was, and he had all this makeup on. But unfortunately, he was not as good looking as Kennedy, and he had a lot more, he had a lot of makeup on early days of TV. And during that broadcast, he started sweating, and, and the makeup started melting off his face. And all of a sudden, that was the impression that people had. That's why Kennedy was sort of considered to win that debate, and it may have led to him actually being becoming president but if you look at the transcripts of the debate if you if you take away the aesthetics you take away the visuals and you read what each man had to say Nixon won that debate is it's what's argued and the arguments aren't hot and heavy it's kind of like it's right there and that, that's what's going on with a lot of these channels about a year ago I, I made a video that uh, I've gone back and forth on whether I should have made but if I had uh, really good friend tell me the difference is you had something to say and at the time I did and then I had a, uh, my lady sort of kind of warned me not to go down that road a little bit and I'll, she was right about a few things which is what I'll mention in this video the fact that we have channels that are just dedicated to roasting Marvel A. they have plenty of uh, ammunition from Marvel themselves not just from the comics but from the Twitter the behavior and things like that um and install a train wreck. So yeah, that's that's it, it's it's the balance. It's the pendulum. You gave them what to use and things like that. And there are different levels of attitudes and presentation and things going on that make that really do set these channels apart. Even though it's we're going to, and, and and I included if I went down that road, I agree with a lot of things that they're saying about Marvel. But if we go back to the Nixon and Kennedy thing, though, it's the presentation, it's how it's looked. If you just take what they're saying about Marvel and stuff, they're right. We have channels that are balanced. We have channels that uh, are just downright. They're coming to a point where they're looking into the abyss, and the the they're, the abyss is looking back at them, and it's affecting them. They're starting to become the opposite of what they started out to point out and to criticize and talk about like we'll say that Marvel has a leftist agenda which from what I understand in a letters column where if you read those letters in the new letters column they cannot be real uh, you know allegedly but you turn around and they're starting to become the extreme of the right instead of being balanced and pointing this stuff out some of these channels are starting to become what they started out to fight maybe you know but they're changing then you have some people who are doing what I refer to as the blind man and the elephant um, the, the the way the story goes just to get it three blind men were, were told to go up and feel something they all look out it was something huge and they all got a piece of it the blind man in the back said it was a tree trunk because he was touching the elephant's leg the blind man in the front said no it was a snake sometimes I've heard it was a vine because he had the trunk they're not wrong okay this is where logic can get flawed a little bit they're not wrong with the information that they have that's a logical conclusion you know trusting what they know and how they know there's no malice they're not out to deceive anybody or anything like that but what's going on is that they didn't get the whole picture to know that it was an elephant if they'd all three gotten together and uh, they probably would have figured it out and that's what I'm starting to see some of these other channels doing they're, they're when it comes to the actual comics and stuff they're calling out a lot of stuff that is wrong with them and what's wrong with it and Marvel's abandoned their history and, and things like that and stuff like that but they're starting to get into the realm of conspiracy with what little pieces they know you know which is a trapping that we all could easily fall into so it's not a slam on those channels but it's one of those things that as a viewer we might want to step back and be like whoa wait a minute and question that we're getting to a point where as comic book collectors and having an easy target like Marvel and, and, I'm, and I'm one of them don't, you know, I'm one of them this is not pointing fingers I'm completely one of them but it's time to kind of slow down and realize these are just comics again by Marvel lowering the bar 
and by Marvel having just this awful social media presence you can have your own social media but if you're using your celebrity as a employee of Marvel you're gonna be associated with them period that's just a fact okay and it's just reached a point to where if you get a Marvel book man it's just this ugliness about it that comes with it now you can't escape it even if you're not on Twitter all the time even if you're not on this if you talk about any kind of comic books and it goes to Marvel you you nobody's really talking about what's going in going on in the comics in overall you know they're just talking about some bad stuff here and some bad stuff there and oh my god it's bad um, and it's, it's a catch-22 uh, but nobody really knows what's going on and then just all this nastiness and lying by Marvel at least what's coming out in the news we'll say miscommunication we'll be a little forgiving and stuff just makes it really hard to enjoy these books but part of the problem is Marvel will not take responsibility for what they're doing it's the fans that have a problem and they're still missing the mark they're in the ballpark but they're in the mark I feel like as comic book fans, we are accepting the fact that they have lowered the bar. The, 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 they're not selling like hotcakes, okay? What's getting ordered through Diamond, what's selling in the comic book shops, not the same. And I predicted a year ago with my SJWs or Killing Marvel Comics and stuff, we're going to see comic book shops shutting down and we're messing with people's lives. I come from the real world aspects of the consequences of what they're doing. It sucks what they've done to some of the characters and some of these storylines they're coming up with and some of these people they're hiring. It's all just lowered the bar. And by lowering the bar, you take me back to when I was collecting comics as a kid when comics, you know, everybody knew they had a stigma. But you didn't care if you loved the comics and stuff. So it's not like I was pushing comics or, or had a platform to talk about comics like YouTube and stuff, right? And now it's almost like it was a self-fulfilling prophecy. This this stuff that they're having coming out of Marvel and stuff, the, the bar is lower. They, they, they've hired inferior talent that works for cheap. People who have never read comic books or people who kind of like might have smelled comic books, they don't know the characters, they don't know the history, and we're expected just to abandon everything we've ever known and read about comics and stuff uh, if we're going to stick around with it. But um, the, the people who are buying the comics you have accepted by paying for it and buying it and supporting it, you are accepting the lowest common denominator. These artists and writers that Marvel has, they're not in an environment where they can flourish and be molded and shaped and learn the industry and things like that. It's not that kind of creative environment anymore. So th thus, these comics are never going to improve with the current state of Marvel and stuff. Uh, we've, if you go way back and look at it, man, you can look at some early work of Frank Miller and, and a few other people and stuff, but they met people. They interned other people. Will Eisner was a huge effect on Frank Miller and stuff. And it came to storytelling and dynamics and things like that, and those are all abandoned. There's a psychology in comics with the storytelling that pulls the reader in, and that's how you get connected to the book. You know, and that's all gone. So just to make sure that I wasn't, like, talking out my ass, I got online and I read this god awful Iceman number one. And my first video that I was wanting to do was maybe talk about it and then show a comic book with a, a, a character who happens to be gay and show you how you can humanize a character and show their journey and stuff and then just have it evolve in front of you through story, good storytelling. Right? I also went back online and I read the issue where you know, Bobby Drake was told by Jean Grey that he was gay because she read. And they've made a mess out of this. First, they were from the past. They tried to go back to the past. These X-Men, the young X-Men, original X-Men, found out they weren't from this past. They're from another dimension. But it still affects the current day Iceman. You know, just enough stuff to make your eyeballs pop out trying to think about it. And it angered me for a different reason. You know, the logic of the stories, the history of, of Bobby Drake, the character... All the telepaths he's run across, all the psychic links he's had with people. Comic Quarter 410 pointed out to me that uh, I think he said it was um, the White Queen had actually possessed uh, Bobby Drake's body for days once she had figured it out. And nothing leads to it. 
but by having the flawed character, by taking these characters and making a scene that could have been wonderful um, and very touching, just kind of showed me that there are writers at Marvel, and there's the that just gave me the impression that something was trying to come out, some quality, but they used the wrong characters, the wrong context, and it, it it's. Uh, God, it's conversion therapy because of the context of the characters with their history and stuff, right? But there's been one character from Marvel that I feel like has gotten um, short end of the stick, if you will, right? And this is actually a problem with Marvel thinking they're being so progressive and stuff. Uh, again, the lowest common denominator. This character here, it says Spider-Man. And this is the character that when I'm at conventions or if I've been in comic book shops or I've been uh, in Books a Million or anywhere I've gone and stuff, it's amazing how many times I've heard the name Miles Morales pop up. And that in itself is very telling. He's not referred to as Spider-Man. He's referred to as Miles Morales. And a couple months ago, I don't know, about a month ago, two months ago, something like that, I bought these two books for a book apiece so I can read Miles Morales. I wanted to know what is the magic that has captured you know the hearts of some of these uh, comic book fans, Miles Morales fans, that seems to make him be kind of on the sideline with what's going on with Marvel. You don't hear the complaint about them. Few things. There's an anxiety of like, are they going to keep him around? Are they going to be there? So by referring to him as Miles Morales, there is a little bit of writing in there where I didn't, I haven't read him. I, I don't think I want to right now for uh, several reasons. But this character is loved and treated like he's a living, breathing person. And he's gotten the short end of the stick because he's been cast in the shadow of Spider-Man. You have made a character that has touched people who can obviously stand on his own with his fan base. And you have to attach him to Spider-Man, which can be interpreted as you don't really believe in this agenda that you guys are pushing for all these characters to be replaced by a new generation um, and that's lazy that's insulting and now you've got a character that a lot of people and a whole new generation have become attached to and you screwed it up you know you had you have magic here and Miles Morales, is, to me, has become a bit of a symbol of, you know, Marvel, what are you going to do? And they can't fix it in a satisfying way. And I would love to be proved wrong on that. So look at, let's take a look at what we're talking about here with Marvel. Uh, how this agenda makes no sense in the bottom line, because there's a lot of people passionate about it. And, you know, you take Thor and... Uh, you have a problem with them because you gotta understand on Twitter so a lot of these characters have made statements like they had their way there would be no white characters Peter Parker has been referred to as the worst you know an actual the greatest Superman Spider-Man villain and some other things and it comes down to racism it doesn't matter how you spin it or what uh, flash in the pan politics you're putting on it and stuff it's racism but you have a character like Thor who is male and white well he's a Nordic god Who's, exist, who's been believed in, existed, told tales of, however you want to put it, for thousands of years. Of course he would be white. You have Captain America, who is white, but the difference is, is that race really never really came up with him, probably until like about a story in the 80s, my Mark grew all that I can recall and stuff, because he became bigger than a man. He's one of the few characters that he's not referred to as Steve Rogers he's referred to as Captain America he became a symbol of, uh, of patriotism and hope and spirit of, of, a, of a nation he, he, it's a nationality thing and you're making it a racism thing and your Marvel is treating him punishing that character by essentially making him a Nazi then denying that Hydras are Nazis and stuff all news things you've heard before but that's what's happening we're reaching a point where People are just spinning their wheels saying the same thing, same thing, same thing, because that's all Marvel is giving them, and they're just not listening. I mean, there's ideas of why they're not listening. You know, Bruce Banner, um, all these characters that the foundation of Marvel was built on, 
and you expect that change to just be accepted uh, when there's many other ways that you could be creative and do new characters. You made Miles Morales. Miles Morales is not referred to as Spider-Man. He's referred to as Miles Morales. Maybe you need to look at what you did there and realize that you can make new characters that can stand on their own two feet and get a whole new fan, fan base and stop trying to alienate yourself from the rest of the market. Um, you know, it's just a few thoughts that I was saying there. <clears throat> but, you know, like I said, it just amazes me that we live in a time that I never would have pictured happen to where sales for Marvel are so bad that they're trying to spin it now, saying that that doesn't reflect the actual sales, and uh, which is ridiculous. And we have channels that are roasting Marvel um, that are getting more views than an actual issue of a Marvel comic sales. And that's very telling. So there's an audience out there that are interested in comics, or they wouldn't be watching these videos, and they're being ignored. Um, Twitter is not being used to build a fan base, it's used to attack them. And then Marvel wants to play the victim after all this time of just being completely nasty on there. Yes, you can say you're an individual. Yes, you can say that you're not working when you're on Twitter, but you have no problem saying that you work for Marvel and putting up banners of your work. Um, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You know, all this stuff is like really common sense and it really blows my mind that we live in a time where you have to like say these things that most people just kind of just know, you know. Anyway, that's all I had to say. I just want to get some stuff off my chest and, uh, you know, you know, carry on.